Welcome to day number 16 as we're continuing to take a look at the life of the Apostle Peter and we find ourselves back in the book of Matthew. Near the very end of the book of Matthew, we are in Matthew chapter 26 and we're looking at verses 30 through 35. And again, if you haven't read those yet, please push the pause button, read Matthew 26, 30 to 35 and then come back to us. But this is where Jesus predicts Peter's denial. And essentially what we discover is, is that they have sung a hymn, they're going out to the Mount of Olives, and then Jesus very prophetically looks at all of the disciples and says to them, you know, you're going to fall away on account of me. Peter, that phrase struck me as I was reading that in preparation for our time together, was that don't, it, it says, and you will all fall away on account of me. There's another time in the gospel where Jesus looks at Peter and says, don't fall away on account of me. It's very interesting. That phrase, for whatever reason, kind of had gripped me. No, he, I'm sorry. He says it to John the Baptist. When John the Baptist is in prison and he sends one of his disciples to Jesus, are you the Messiah, aren't you? And Jesus says to John's disciple, go back and tell John, don't fall away on account of me. In other words, Jesus wasn't doing what John the Baptist thought he should. And here we discover that same phrase comes up again. It, anyway, just fascinated me. But he says to all the disciples, you're, you're basically going to fall away. Um, and Peter chimes in in verse 33 and says, even if all these other people fall away on account of you, I never will. And Jesus, oh, Peter, I hate to tell you this, but before the cock crows three times. And what's amazing to me, though, is verse 35. And it says, Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And the next phrase fascinates me. And all the other disciples said the same. So Peter's the one that's kind of getting the print, but everyone says what Peter says. So Peter, looking at this, I mean, how is it in our own lives if someone that we look up to and we love and has authority over us, and they basically say, guess what, Peter, you're going to fail this one. You know, yeah. you're not... This one's, yeah, this isn't going to go well. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think, um, I think um, at least the people I know in America mm -hmm. have a real hard time being able to see how our faith is bigger than the story of failure to success. Okay. We have this sense that faith is there to make our lives better. Right. Um, we have this sense that uh, God is there to empower us to do things, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even empower us to be things, mm -hmm. and that that's the point. That is the point. But yeah. Jesus models this. I mean, think what was going on. Jesus is saying, well, I'm about to have my worst moment ever where yeah. I will need you yeah. more than I've ever needed you. Yeah. You're going to fail me, mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm, gonna still, I'm still going to do it, though. Yeah. And there's this kind of incredible statement of God's grace in the sense that Jesus knows they are going to fail. We don't get the sense that they're going to fail because Jesus said it. It's just kind of... Oh, right. I know exactly Jesus. What I mean. don't think Jesus... He's is not like, stacking the deck by saying No, that. he's yeah. also not sort of like prophesying and therefore it becomes true. Right. I think Jesus knows. Presumably he's been let known by God. Um, yes. You are going to fall away yeah. because of me this night. Yeah. And th that's all he, this is, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think on the other side of the ellipsis, um, it's the, and I'm still going to do this. And then he promises, after I am raised up, I will go before you to the gallery. Right, right, right. So there's this way in which Jesus is, I, th I think it's almost hard to take in fully the kind of incredible grace and love that Jesus is modeling here. And it's interesting to note that in faith and love, Jesus not only says to Peter, you're going to fall away, but as you've mentioned, it says very clearly, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. So there's the sense that Jesus not only knows of Peter's failures, but he's letting Peter know that I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to exit. I'm actually going to remain faithful to you. 
And what a lesson that is for all of us spiritually, that in Christ, God is faithful to us even when we are not faithful to God. And that's very clear what's being said. Now notice though, Peter re-ups again and says, nah man, isn't it funny how every time, it, not every time, it seems like often when Jesus says something to Peter, Peter argues with him. It's yeah. just like, nah, Jesus, you're not going to wash. No, wash my whole body, right? And he's doing it again where Jesus is saying, hey, man, this is what you're going to do. And Peter's like, never. He's like, well, oh, yeah, no, I'm not. Well, think also of another way. How's this supposed to go? Um, Jesus comes up to him and goes like, you are going to betray me. Right. I mean, the human instinct is either to say that's not true or if you accept that it was true, well, what am I going to do to make it better? Yeah, right. Or, right. And there's this like, moment of God's sheer grace in which you're going to fail, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do to make it better, mm -hmm. and that is okay. Um, as we look at this text, um, is there anything else, Peter, that kind of comes to mind? Um, but I know for me, the real dagger in the heart of Peter for me would have been where Jesus says, guess what, Peter? you're not just going to betray me once or deny me. Right. It's going to be three times. You're going to do it once, twice, three times. And so I think even in that, there's this incredible grace of Christ where Jesus is telling him, here's what you're going to do. And yet we know the story. Jesus meets Peter on the other side of the resurrection and loves him and reinstates him. And there's something in this for me where it teaches us the grace of Christ at a level that's very difficult for some of us to actually believe is true. It's actually hard for us to believe that yeah. that's true. So Peter, is there anything else that comes to mind when you look at this text? No, but big warning, we're gonna be spending the next little while right. in and around a storyline that's kind of started here. Yes. Which is G Peter's gonna deny Jesus, Peter's gonna have to live with that for a while, right. Jesus is gonna come get him. Yeah. And so we're going to live through that story for the next week or so. Right, and Peter falls asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane. I mean, quite frankly, if you look at it honestly, it's way more than three times that Peter seems to fumble oh, the yeah. ball in the process between this prophetic announcement and what Peter does. Well, when we look at our own lives, obviously, for some of us, we struggle to look at this amount of love and grace and forgiveness, and we struggle to actually believe that God in Christ would actually be willing to do that for me. But my prayer is, as we close out our time, and I'm going to pray, literally pray it in a moment, is that each one of us would be open to understanding that in Jesus Christ, there actually is that type of an aggressive, forgiving grace that Jesus offers us. Let's pray together. Well, Jesus... As we look at this story, it's either historical and separated from us, or it's historical, it's spiritually true, and it's attributable to our own lives. So I pray a blessing over all of us, but specifically that woman or that man who has found themselves uh, repeatedly outside of what's best for you, for us, and yet now they're sensing that in Jesus there's hope, there's grace, and there's forgiveness. Lord, I pray that you would meet each one of us, but specifically those who are struggling with this concept, that truly we'd experience your grace and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at tomorrow's video.